Now remember that when I have comments come in from viewers um, that ask me about other kinds of questions, things not covered in videos, or just a harder example, that's called a viewer challenge. So get a piece of paper and I want you to try this. We're going to be talking about simplifying radicals and radical expressions. Here we go. All right, we're going to look at square root numbers. Let's let's uh, quiz you a little bit. What's the square root of 1? Well, of course, it's 1. Now, we're talking about the principal square root, so it's the positive version, not the negative version. You know the square root of 1 could be positive or negative 1. Let's just take the positive 1. So square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25, of course, is 5. Square root of six, uh, 36 is 6, and square root of 49 is 7. Now we could keep going, but the point here is that perfect square numbers are numbers you can take the square root of, of course, and can't get a decimal or a fraction. So they're really nice numbers. We want to find these. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49, and of course numbers higher than that are perfect square numbers. Those are the ones we are going to look for when we are simplifying radicals. And now here is the challenge. Let's simplify the following radicals. Now we're going to start out kind of easy and get harder. Square root of 45. Well, if I take the square root of 45, it's not quite 49, so it's going to be 6 point something. Now we're not talking about the decimal answer. That's the approximate answer because we'd have to round it. We're talking about the exact answer, simplified, which means a smaller number inside the radical, the radicand. We want the smallest radicand possible. So what we have to do is split it up. All right, so here's what we do. We think of 45 as a perfect square number times something else. So think about your perfect square numbers, 1, 4, 9, uh, oh, 9. That's going to be the largest perfect square number that's a factor of 45. So 45 is 9 times 5, right? Now remember that, now I'm going to kind of show you the long way, there'll be some shortcuts. You can write a radical as a product like that, but you can also split it up. So it's radical 9 times radical 5. All right, now we did this because we can find the square root of 9, which is 3. So now we're going to just attach it to the radical 5. That means 3 times radical 5. And now we've written it as a simplified radical. Notice how we went from a radicand of 45 to a radicand of 5. So that's considered simplified. All right, now we can kind of skip this middle step. Now I'm not going to, but... I want you to remember that you can always split up the radical like that. All right, so 125. What times what is 125? Remember to think of perfect square numbers. Oh, I'm thinking of 25 times 5. Okay, so we can split that up as the square root of 25 times the square root of 5. And as you can see, that will give us 5 square root of 5. All right. So that's a simplified radical. How about 320? Well, I'm thinking of it as 32 times 10, but that doesn't work. Those are not perfect square numbers. But, oh, I notice it's 16 times 2 times 10. So how about 16 times 20? Is that going to work? No, not quite. All right, got to keep going. What's the biggest perfect square factor? It happens that it's going to be 64 times 5. All right, now I have to kind of manipulate the numbers a little bit and keep trying, but that's okay. Now I know the square root of 64 is 8, so that's going to be the outside number, 8 times radical 5, or 8 radical 5. That's the simplest form of radical 320. All right, now hit pause and try this last one and see if you can simplify five those radicals then subtract and add good luck all right I'm gonna rewrite radical 12 as radical 4 times 3 because 4 is a perfect square all right and then how about 108 as being 36 times 3 all right let's think of it like that and then the 192 can be written as 64 times 3. Hmm, interesting. 
So, how do you write that as simplified radicals? Well, four, the square root of four is two, so that's gonna be two radical three. 36 is, uh, square root of 36 is six times radical three. So we write it like that. And square root of 64 is eight, so that's gonna be eight radical three. Now see these constant factors on the outside? That's what we can combine together. All right, so now we need to think. What's two take away six plus eight? That's right, final answer is four radical three. All right, well thank you very much for trying this and I hope that it was uh, at least a little challenging for you even if you already knew how to simplify radicals. Thanks again and make some comments and share these videos and see you next time.